fashion accessory syndromes, unit 3, module 3, eyewear. Introduction. This is the third module of this unit and it is about eyewear. In this unit, we will list the types of eyewear and also look into its history and evolution. We will also discuss important eyewear brands such as Rayban and Bosch and & Long in the process. We will also make a note of the various styles and shapes of eyewear and how they can be fashionably styled. Eyewear, what was once a medical remedy, is today a must-have fashion accessory. Regardless of having vision problems, the fashion forward today invest in eyewear. Spectacles, sunglasses and contact lenses all come under the types of different eyewear. Needless to say, their form, material, colour, make and even function are dictated by the fashion industry. Let us now start this unit by looking at the different types of eyewear. All of you must be aware of reading glasses. These are better known as prescription glasses. Then you have contact lens. Then you have protective eyewear for sport and industrial practices. And last but not the least, everybody's favorite sunglasses. Reading glasses. Reading glasses is actually a misnomer. These come under the category of prescription glasses that also help you read. Now your type of vision problem will help you determine the shape of your lens. You might need a concave lens if you are nearsighted. A convex lens will help if you are farsighted. If you have astigmatism, your lens may be more like a cylinder. There are different kinds of lenses available in the market. These are bifocal, trifocal and progressive. You may choose them on consultation with your doctor. While spectacle lenses or glass lenses are traditionally used in prescription glasses, impact resistant polycarbonate lens and high index plastic lens are commonly used nowadays. These are much lighter in weight and they come with a variety of finishes. You can even have UV protection or tint happening on your prescription glasses. The second category is that of contact lens. A contact lens is a thin curved lens placed on the film of tears that covers the surface of your eye. They can be prescription oriented for vision or simply colored lenses with zero power or plano want to change one's appearance. Special effect lenses are also available. They are worn for photo shoots, fashion shows, performances, as part of cosplay or even for Halloween costumes. Some popular brands of contact lenses are Bosch & Long, AccuView, Air Optics, BioInfinity and Aqualens. Protective Eyewear Protective eyewear is used to protect the eyes from UV light, from chemicals, wind blast, insects, and dust particles or even sparks. They can be used when participating in sports such as swimming, cycling, skiing or when involved in activities that require hard labor and things flying like woodworking, glass work where you need to stare right into the flame, working with lasers, soldering and so on. Solar eclipse glasses that we use to see this beautiful natural phenomena is also an example of protective eyewear. Now, if we have to take this category of protective eyewear itself, we can divide it into four types. Protective glasses, protective goggles, eye mask and finally protective sunglasses. Now, they can be made in several finishes 
apart from clear which is what is commonly used for activities such as hardware maintenance and woodworking to finishes such as anti glare anti fog and even dust resistant sunglasses sunglasses help protect the eyes from excessive sunlight so in a way they are also protective eyewear they can be treated with filter such as an ultraviolet filter and they can correct for glare reflection and even vision the most common finish in sunglass lens is photochromatic finish this means color changing that is the color or tint of the lens adjusts by itself when you move from the harsh outdoor that is sunlight to indoor light other sunglasses finish include anti reflective scratch resistant and ultraviolet protection now in india sunglasses are very commonly available and worn and used by almost everybody you can purchase them from anywhere from high end departmental stores to even a roadside vendor however note that most of these protective finishes come in eyewear that can be purchased from branded stores only these come specifically with a warranty today sunglasses can be made specifically for you that is they can be customized or mass customized power sunglasses that are single vision sunglasses where power can be added to a lens is a great example of this sunglasses can be used simply only for fashion to add panache to your look mirror coated sunglasses that are much in vogue right now are a classic example of fashion based product choice so now that we have seen the kind of eyewear that is available in the market i would like you to make a note of the brands of eyewear that you see around you what are the kind of brands that you see what are their offerings i encourage you to log on to their websites and make a note of these brands styles available and trends that are available at the moment in your learning diary now that we have looked into the present and maybe even the future it's time to look into the past aren't you curious how eyewear came to be who was the first person who wore glasses or from what century did people start wearing prescription eyewear let me take you down the memory lane for that history of eyewear roman tragedy in seneca in somewhere between the 4th bc and 65 ad is said to have used a glass globe of water as a magnifier to read all the books of rome the first vision aid is called a reading stone this is a handheld glass sphere magnifier that was invented around 1000 ad it has been reported that chinese used flat panes of smoky quartz to protect their eyes from harsh sunlight so the history of eyewear probably goes much farther than we think and it's much more widespread fast forward we come to 13th century ad it is said that by this time the venetians perfected the art of creating lapide at legend that is stones for reading later convex quartz reading stones were set in handheld horn or wood frames making them similar to the handheld magnifying lenses of today some attribute this creation to salvino de armate of florence while others to alexandro spina of pisa The first eye glasses were made with round biconvex lenses and they were used to improve 
far-sighted vision. When transparent and colourless glass paste was discovered in the 1300s, lenses became affordable. Therefore, eyeglasses trading went past the Venetian lagoon and soon all of Europe was looking at what was came to be known as first commercial eyewear. Now, the first known artistic representation of the use of eyeglasses was Tommaso de Modena's painting in 1352. His painting depicts monks reading and writing manuscripts. With the invention of printing, books became available to everyone. And therefore, the demand and subsequent popularity of spectacles rose exponentially. Spectacles with frames that could be perched on the nose came into being. These appeared to be two simple lenses edged with wooden rims, fixed by a central pivot to rest directly on the nose. This freed the hands, helping the wearer to work on another project while being able to look clearly. If I have to think about people in the past, I wonder what their lives would have been like. Maybe after an age, their life around them would have seemed blurry. But what about painters who contributed effectively to art? How could they paint so well if they could not see clearly? Now you must have all heard about the artist Leonardo da Vinci. Da Vinci is said to have envisioned the concept of contact lenses in 1508. In the 1600s, copper frames were used to hold the lenses and spectacles were secured in various ways at the back. The first scholar to separate and order the lens according to their corrective power was the Portuguese notary Deca de Valdes in 1623. This was the first official noting of lens power. In the 1700s, British optician Edward Scarlett perfected the temple glasses. These were equipped with side arms pressing on the temples ending in large loops. This is considered to be the predecessor of the modern day spectacle. You know at this point of time it was considered rude to wear glasses in public. So magnifying lenses were built into women's fans, necklaces and they were meant to be taken to the opera. Lens were also affixed to men's walking sticks, so they could spy on each other while taking a stroll through the park. This might bring to your attention several old movies which showed old men spying on their friends or maybe relatives using their walking stick. Or women ooing and eyeing over opera performances while looking through a magnifying glass. Along with bifocals, the 18th century is known for the log net and the monocle as well. They were made in gold and silver and were adorned with precious stones. These were not considered to be simply eyewear but also jewellery for the face. In this context, John Isaac Hawkins, the inventor of trifocal lenses, coined the term bifocals in 1824 and he credited Dr. Benjamin Franklin as the inventor of bifocals. Now there is a lot of dispute here at this point. Did Franklin dare really invent the bifocals or was it something that he discovered and passed it on or maybe perfected? We will need to do more research to find that out. Now coming to 
the 19th century. Prince Ness films were very popular. They were even sported by President Roosevelt. Celluloid, bakelite and galactite replaced traditional materials as eyewear frames. In 1929, Sam Foster utilized polarizing filters to create sunglasses. And by doing so, he revolutionized the entire eyewear industry. Anti-glare impact resistant lenses with plastic frames that could cut out the glare without obscuring vision were patented by Bosch and Long in 1939. These were the famous Ray-Ban aviators. Apart from their aviators, their wayfarers and Olympians are classic eyewear choices. In the 1950s witnessed the first attempts at customizable frames. Various rimmed and supra models, that is supra nylon models, were produced that came with a set of interchangeable colored trims. In the 1960s, designer Pierre Cardin's daring glass designs from bright plastic square frames to circular lenses to metallic sunglasses with uneven frames treated spectacles as an accessory that may or may not have a corrective function. This opened the floodgates for fashionistas to create interesting and quirky looks. The 1965 who is behind the Foster Grants made Foster Grants sunglasses all the rage in USA. In 1971, soft contact lenses known as soft lens were introduced by Bosch and Lam. So you can see that almost there is a parallel history that existed when you compare prescription glasses and contact lenses. Jacqueline Kennedy made oversized sunglasses extremely chic and fabulous at this point of oversized square sunglasses in brown and tan plastic frame that were originally designed by Nina Rishi are known as Jackie O glasses. They are epitome of classic fashion. The 1960s and 1970s brought about a trend of futuristic eyewear. This was a direct result of the space age fashion trends that were going around during this period. The 1980s saw eyewear companies specifically targeting children. It is not that children did not wear eyewear before. It is just that more and more options were being made for them specifically. Plastic lenses came into being in a big way. Celebrities like Madonna and Tom Cruise in the West and Rajni Gandhi in India made eyewear a fashion must have. Though eyewear reached the zenith of its popularity in the late 80s and early 90s, the later part of 1990s and 2000s saw a huge popularity of contact lenses, particularly in India. Why? Spectacles were being considered old-fashioned, cumbersome, attractive and maybe even as a sign of aging. Contact lens was the order of the day. There have been many references in Bollywood and regional film songs to contact lens too. As time passed by, many opted for LASIK to correct their vision problems. Inocular lenses, that is IOL, were implanted in the eye during cataract surgery. These were to make sure that prescription glasses were kept to a minimum. So now what about the present and the future of eyewear? The current decade has seen a 
resurgence of eyewear in the form of spectacles and sunglasses so far. While selecting eyewear, fashion today is considered as important as the functionality of eyewear. While movies like Back to the Future or Matrix influenced eyewear trends in the previous decades, movies like the Harry Potter series were instrumental in bringing eyewear to the forefront once again. Fashion looks like the geek look and nerd look inspired people to wear glasses. Now these could just be plano glasses that are an accessory, but one that completes their look. Today even eyewear that blocks or even blurs vision is used as a fashion accessory. These surfaces serve as filters through which the user sees but is also seen and thereby eyewear becomes a mask as well. Smart eyewear has become the order of the day. In 2013, Google Glass, a smart glass with a touchpad, camera and heads up display was launched. However, this did not become very popular. Today, brands like View claim that you can listen to music, answer calls and hear notifications all from your glasses. And the best part is that they can be controlled with gesture control. Both futuristic and retro styles have merged creating retro futuristic looks. Hyper personalization of glasses is the order of the day. A design can be created, customized and 3D printed to fulfill one's requirement. These can be finished exactly the way you want. As a contrast, traditional product making materials like wood and wicker have also come into the forefront. Now this brings us to exciting possibilities that we can look forward to in the upcoming years. I cannot discuss eyewear without contemplating fashion. That is the effect of fashion on eyewear and the effect of eyewear on fashion. Now imagine that you are going to a store to pick your pair of glasses, be it prescription glasses or sunglasses. What will you consider? Of course the price, but then when all things considered, you would also look at the material, the color and yes, the shape. You will probably try one on and then ask yourself, does this suit me? So now let us look at the various eyewear shapes and styles that are available in the market. While a majority of them have been used across categories, that is both in prescription glasses as well as sunglasses, some of them are used only in sunglasses. Let us look at the commonly available shapes now. Oval, round, square and trapezium, rectangle and pillow rectangle and the quirky cat eye. Sunglasses styles. Now when I first say sunglasses what is the style that comes to your mind? If you are like me, you would probably say aviators. Now aviators started as a medical necessity for pilots flying combat planes during the first world war. They required it to shield their eyes from the sun's glare at high altitudes. Slowly the shape evolved and became a part of the standard issue during World War II. Created by Bosch and Lam, these teardrop shaped lenses with metal frames caught the fancy of men in armed forces, police and even sports 
sportsmen didn't want to be left behind. It was widely used in movies while portraying certain characters. And then they came to be associated with the men of style. Nobody can forget how Tom Cruise looked in Top Gun. Wayfarers, these have an iconic trapezoidal frame with thick temples. They have been popularly worn through the decades by Beatles, Billy Joel and yes, even Tom Cruise, Clubmaster. These are bro-line sunglasses with rounded lenses. They have statement making upper rims made up of plastic and slim wire rims around the bottom. You might have seen images of Robert Pattinson wearing the Clubmaster glasses. Caravan, designed as an alternative to aviators. The caravan features square sunglasses lenses and frames as opposed to the teardrop shaped lens of the aviator. They also have the famous thin double bridge at the nose. These are the most popular glasses in India. Manhattan, made famous by Audrey Hepburn in Breakfast at Tiffany's. The Manhattan glasses were made by Oliver and Goldsmith. But they were mistaken as Ravens. Manhattan is a very chic shape. It is a rounded style with a slight trapezoidal or a cat eye like finish at the end. John Lennon Inspired by the famous singer John Lennon, the round shaped glasses can make you look cute and quirky or even sinister and mysterious. Dark round glasses have been worn by Lady Gaga many a times. Cat eye. This style features frames that resemble the slightly tilted, upswept eyes of a cat. The white cat eye glasses worn by Grace Kelly in How to Catch a Thief, made by Oliver and Goldsmith, elevated the shape to its today's iconic status. They were also worn famously in Thelma and Louise. And they were a tour de force in Indian cinema, in particularly in our retro movies. Butterfly. This style features frames that splay out to resemble butterfly wings. Again, this was a very interesting retro style of glasses. Rimless. These glasses appear to not have any rims. The lenses are usually joined to the temples and or even to the bridge using mounting screws. These are used by people who want their glasses to be lightweight and who do not want to have a border around their lens. Templeless glasses also come under this category. Templeless glasses are those without both rims and temples. They give off a very futuristic look and have been used a lot in movies. A famous Indian look with these glasses is of Rajnikanth in the movie Basha. Wraparounds. These sunglasses curve around the head from the front to the side and they provide extra protection from sunlight. These are best if you are travelling in places that are extremely hot and sunny. And they can also be used when you are doing any light sports. Moving on to now selecting the right shape of eyewear for your face. Eyewear fashion is not very complicated. But selecting the right shape of eyewear for your face is crucial. This helps you present yourself impeccably. It helps you create a new persona or it can be used to amplify your personality. It can make you look like yourself or completely another person. Now let us look at some face shapes 
and the kind or the style of glasses that you can wear if you have them. Round face. If you have a round face with full cheeks and a rounded chin, styles such as the Wayfarers and Club Master will suit you the best. A round face can also benefit from sharper edges of a cat eye glass or any large frames that curve upwards. Oval face. If you have an oval face, then you should choose frames that are as wide or even wider than the broadest part of your face. Since oval is considered an ideal face shape, frames that are square, rectangular, round or even in the cat eye shape will suit you. You can wear retro glasses in both solid colors or go for patterned options like flowers, checks and tortoise shell based on the kind of look that you want to portray. Heart shape. If you have a heart shaped face or a diamond shaped face, then round and square shapes will suit you the best. As your face is widest at the forehead and gradually narrows to the jaw. Square face. Round, oval and cat eye frames complement your prominent jawline and angular features. You can choose wider frames or go for neutral colors to make your face look thinner and softer if that is what you wish to do. Activities for Unit 3 Here are some suggested activities that will help you get a better grasp of the finer points that we have discussed in this unit. I would like you to create a learning diary in A4 size by binding together probably cartridge paper of any color of your choice, preferably light colors. Continue to use the same diary for scrapbooking activities that are listed in the upcoming units as well. Identify and glue images from the magazines or net of hats and hair accessories that are worn on the head. Name these styles in your diary. You can also sketch and design your accessories in this category. Similarly, identify and glue images of eyewear. Look through different websites of brands that are available. You might also visit forecasting websites like Promoster, WGSN, Trend Hunter, Mudpie in order to do your research. Alternatively, you can also create a Pinterest board collecting images of your choice which can later be transferred to your learning diary. Once you go through the entire unit, I would also like you to note the current fashion trends that have evolved in the last two seasons around these accessories. Do you associate with them? Or are they so far off that you cannot imagine yourself to be wearing or suggesting them to your prospective clients? Write a critical analysis of the same. The materials that would be required for these activities include cartridge sheets, binder, magazines, stationary items and probably printouts. Suggested activity 2. In this unit, we have shown you various practical examples of how to make your own hat and hair accessories. For this activity, I suggest that you start your millinery process by styling a ready-made hat. You can style an existing store-bought hat, a straw hat or a hat of any material and shape.
to be worn at a derby. You can use materials such as tulle, lace, any ribbons and trims and probably sew them or glue them as you have been shown in the unit. You can also create hair accessories for yourself or for a little girl to be worn at a birthday party. You will require materials such as embellishments, laces, trims, sewing needle and thread, felt base, glue gun and scissors for the same. Suggest in activity 3. In the unit on neckwear, on ties and the subsequent unit on shawls, I have demonstrated various ways in which ties and shawls can be worn. Now I would like you to go on the internet and to the market to look at the various styles that are available. Pick out a tie that you are most gravitated towards. Include its picture in your learning diary. Learn to wear a tie using at least one or two of the knots that were suggested. You can also come up with new ways to drape your shawl or your scarf. You can either take pictures or create small videos and upload them in your social media. This would translate the theoretical learning of this unit into practical activities and help you become masters of this subject. Conclusion During the course of this module, I hope that I have walked you through not only the history and evolution of classes, but also fashion tips on how the right kind of eyewear can be selected to suit yourself. While the initial purpose of eyeglasses was to correct a vision flaw, glasses today do not conceal that flaw, but they actually emphasize it by means of design. Eyewear comprises of prescription glasses, contact lens, sunglasses and protective eyewear. There are several eyewear shapes and styles available in the market to suit your fashion needs as we have just seen. While buying power spectacles or sunglasses, it is important to remember that these will not just protect you from sun or smoke damage and help you read, but also frame your face. If chosen and used wisely, it can either camouflage or highlight portions of your face and hair, depending on how what you wanted to do with this we come to the end of this module on eyewear.